Mike Laporte back with you on the Rural Radio Network. And uh, our guest uh, today, Don Hutchins, who uh, is executive director of the Nebraska Corn Board uh, and has been for a long time. But he will not have that title too much longer because officially, as I understand it, Don, August 1st, uh, you're going to transition into uh, retirement. And so congratulations on a long distinguished uh, career uh, in the uh, corn board capacity and uh, we wish you well as as you uh, move uh, into to other things so give us some thoughts about 27 years well thanks mike the uh, you know the job kind of fit uh, fit me uh, coming off the farm uh, i farmed for about uh, 14 years when bob carey um, asked me to join the department of agriculture with chuck schroeder then as the director and um, I spent two years there, and then the uh, Corn Board had approached me earlier about their executive director position. And, you know, paying into the checkoff as a farmer, uh, being there when the checkoff was passed in 1978 as a producer, uh, being uh, one of the early members of the Blue River Corn Growers Association, and then having the opportunity to administer the, the way checkoff dollars are invested through the nine-member board just kind of fit who I am. And, and uh, I'm passionate about checkoff programs and the importance of those pro- programs. And I've, I've really seen them make a difference over the 27 years. Well, of course, uh, <coughs> I know we're not going to get uh, a non-biased uh, opinion. But, uh, you know, why... Uh, I guess tell me about what you think some of the biggest accomplishments have been uh, in in terms of uh, bang for the buck, if you will, uh, return on investment for the checkoff. Well, I think checkoffs do uh, collectively what producers can't do individually. You stop and think that 95 percent of the world's population is outside of the United States. We're very productive in the United States, and and in in the grains, we've been dependent on uh, federal programs for for years, and and we all know that that's going to stop. Federal dollars are shrinking, state dollars are shrinking, and so when it comes down to doing market development work or research or promotion or education or defending agriculture today, the dollars that are really out there to do that are checkoff dollars. And so I, I've watched the market shift from Russia and the European Union uh, to places like China and Korea and Mexico uh, for, for our commodity. I've watched what we've done in the meat industry. In 2003, we saw all of our meat exports plummet to zero and uh, after the BSE issue. And now I've watched uh, what we've been able to do with checkoff dollars and promoting a, a high-quality product around the world that we're back up there in the game. And we, we have to be diligent about the competition. The competition in Australia and Brazil and Argentina and the Ukraine and around the world, uh, they're not sitting idly by. They're, they're looking to really be very active and uh, promoting their commodities as well. Don, uh, you've seen uh, some big changes, uh, obviously, uh, in uh, that amount of time. And so uh, anything come to mind in terms of uh, kind of milestones? Well, f- for me, uh, you know, I remember when the Starlink issue uh, surfaced and, um, and farmers, there was a group of farmers in Illinois that filed a class action suit. And, and I think a lot of Nebraska farmers would not have been able to collect on, on that portion of their uh, portion of the lawsuit had it not been for a commodity checkoff program that looked a little beyond what our typical responsibilities would be. Uh, we helped. We got very active. We, we cleared it with the attorney general's office that it was a legitimate class action lawsuit and went out there and helped farmers file their claims. And ironically, that brought in $11.3 million to, uh, to Nebraska farmers. So always keeping your eye on, on the issues and, um, and, and not being afraid to speak up on behalf of farmers. Today, agriculture gets a bad rap. Um, uh, regarding its industrialized, its corporate uh, animal welfare issues. And we really have to tell our story that, uh, you know, the, the 90% of the farmers today are family farms. Uh, we're, we're growing more with less, less energy, less water. Uh, we take care of our animals. That's our livelihood. It's those kinds of issues that we have to make sure that Congress understands. We have to let make sure the consumer understands. Uh, what what we do and how we do it. And so there's a lot of those kinds of issues. And it takes qualified staff. 
Uh, we've grown a staff from just myself and a secretary to six really qualified individuals that are passionate about agriculture, and it takes great leadership. Uh, I've worked for wonderful board members over the years that are very passionate about what they do as well. Don, uh, the GMO issue, as we uh, look uh, both uh, here uh, domestically and uh, internationally, seems to be one that just doesn't go away. We've kind of dealt with uh, that, and, and we were thinking that maybe uh, we would make some progress. Any, any thoughts about uh, where we are in, in that particular arena? You bet. I mean, where we are today is 99% of the soybeans are GMOs, 92% uh, of the corn is GMO. Uh, it's, it's a safe uh, way to, to grow our, our commodities. Uh, there's, there's issues today in the European Union, and they have their reasons for opposing it. They, they're bogged down in a bureaucracy uh, that uh, doesn't really care to, to embrace uh, GMOs. We've been nine years in trying to get some trades approved uh, in, in with the EU Commission. China today is using a GMO issue to, I think, for their benefit. Uh, so there's always a lot of politics, but the science is there. Um, the, the fact that we are able today to grow the volumes of commodities we do in, in a safer environment, I believe, that is sustainable. Uh, it is allowing us to grow more for a population uh, projected to be 9 billion people by 2050. Now, that sounds good on the front end, like it's, it's a... It's a street paved with gold from here on out, but uh, not necessarily so when you look at the competition around the world. And so it's a real balancing act. And, and you know, your news uh, lately has been uh, from an Illinois study that farm income's really going to drop this year. And we are in a cyclical industry. Uh, but we always have to be doing the best job we can, keeping the cost in check, uh, and, and I think it's uh, biotech. I think it's the, the new uh, RTK uh, GPS technology that really allows us to do a better job growing our commodities. Don, uh, as you uh, uh, kind of uh, work uh, to transition, which I'm sure you have been, uh, as you uh, tell your, your successor, uh, wh whoever that may be, uh, about you know what to look out for you know in the in whatever the next year two three four what what's on your radar what are what are you saying is going to be uh, the keys out there well I already know who my successor is going to be that's going to be Kelly Brunkhorst originally from Juanita Nebraska I hired him ten years ago uh, a very bright uh, I'll say young man because he's uh, at least uh, two and a half decades younger than I am um, he's going to do an excellent job. But to, to say, yeah, he's, he's already got his hands on the pulse. He's, he's an excellent uh, economist, so to speak. He, he can look at the numbers and figure things out pretty easily. But it's not just the numbers. It's, it's having a sense, having your, your hand on the vibrations of agriculture and what's going on. Uh, the, the issues I think we have to deal with is, is federal policies that are uh, waters of the U.S., uh, over zealous um, policymakers and, and EPA, some of those kind of federal issues. Um, but I think in, in how we position ourselves, it's going to have to be a coming together of, of commodity groups, of agriculture in the United States. Uh, we're going to have to pull together on a number of, of issues, uh, not only in Congress, but environmental issues and of, of global issues, and, and especially trade issues. And, and we've got to, for Nebraska's sake, we always have to make sure that we've got the corn, ethanol, and livestock interest pulling together the best we can. Sometimes we're at odds, and, and the best thing you can do is, is be cognizant of that and listen to both sides and try to find that middle ground. And, and Kelly's going to do a great job, and we've got, uh, we've got a, a great staff that's going to work with the board to get that done. Uh, Don, I, I know at the end of the month we've got the, the Grains Council meeting uh, coming up in Omaha, and I think uh, there's going to be kind of a special recognition for your years of service uh, during uh, that particular get-together. Well, uh, it's great. The U.S. Grains Council is having their meeting in, in uh, Omaha. Julia Shaw from Iowa is uh, the chairman of the U.S. Grains Council. Uh, so it's it's really his meeting, but since uh, it kind of all came together with the meeting in Omaha and and my retirement about the same time, it's a 
it's a good time to have a lot of the, the people I've worked with for the last 27 years come together and uh, kick me out the door. <laughs> Well, Don, we uh, thank you for all the uh, efforts uh, over that period of time and uh, all the, uh, the work that's been done and uh, the, uh, the energy and uh, the, uh, uh, just uh, the, uh, I guess, the, uh, the fact that you have had a passion for the job, and that's been evident. And uh, we wish you well as you uh, transition into the next phase. Well, thank you. And, and listen, uh, I've had a wonderful working relationship with KRVN and, uh, and, and all the, the reporters I've had the opportunity to work with. And Mike, you've participated in our corn harvest tour a number of times. And it's, it's having people in your business that understand what we do uh, on behalf of agriculture and then connecting that uh, with your listeners really helps the education process for us. So I really want to thank you and KRVN for all the time and and uh, all the interviews, and uh, you know, once you turn the switch on, uh, I can go <laughs> on and on, and because I am passionate yeah. about uh, what I do and, and our industry. Well, Don, thank you so much. Don Hutchins, our guest, executive director until uh, August 1st, officially, of the uh, Nebraska Corn Board, but uh, uh, celebrating a 27-year uh, gig uh, where he has uh, been involved uh, in, in the, the, that capacity. This is the Rural Radio Network.